And now, here is a special sneak preview of Road to Eternity's King Liberating the Nation. Minister, activist, leader. These are just a few titles given to a man who is recognized today as one of the most remarkable people in American history. Join us as we celebrate the legacy of Dr. King, from his early days as a young child in Atlanta, Georgia, to the creation of a campaign for people in poverty following the days of his death. This is King, Liberate a Nation. Welcome to the DuSable Museum of African American History, where history, culture, and art come to life. It's appropriate that we find ourselves here in this building, where each relic holds a chronicle from the past to unveil. Because right now, we're going to travel back in time to witness the story of Dr. King and the incredible journey he embarked on in order to become one of the most remarkable leaders of the 20th century. But first, let's take a look at something more familiar. When we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Because of this motivating speech, individuals were prompted to take action against economic inequality and racial discrimination in the workplace, so that all Americans can live together in peace throughout the country. As a result of the march, the United States Congress enacted the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on July 2nd, which prohibited racial segregation and discrimination in schools and public facilities. I would simply like to say that I think this has been one of the great days of America. And I think this march will go down as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, uh, demonstrations for freedom and human dignity ever held in the United States. On October 14th, Dr. King was given the Nobel Peace Prize for applying his strategies of nonviolence in the United States and was the youngest recipient of the award at that time. 